AI, artificial intelligence, machine learning, whatever the hell you want to call it, but more importantly, ready or not, it's coming to a car near you sooner than you think, which leads us to two questions. What does it mean in a car and why is it important? AI helps cars make quicker decisions and improve road safety. So put another way, human imitation. There's two things that go into it. Number one, a super fast chip. And number two, a hell of a lot of inputs. Now, what do I mean by inputs? Engineers will give you terms like multimodal. What I'm telling you is things like LIDAR, radar, cameras, driver input, sensors, that kind of stuff that are all connected to either one or many different super fast chips. Now, what do we mean by super fast chips? Those of you that are into trading stocks probably have heard of NVIDIA. There's a reason why you've heard of NVIDIA, because NVIDIA is kind of like the foundation for future technology, specifically AI, because these guys make very fast chips. They have a huge market cap, but they do have competitors. The second biggest one is Qualcomm. Now, I'm old enough to remember from my tech days, Qualcomm was a company that basically powered Verizon phones and some Israeli phones. Wow, have they changed. They made many changes over the years, but one of the big strategic things that they changed back when the pandemic hit, car manufacturers were like, oh my God, we're not gonna sell cars. So they canceled most of their chip orders. There was one company that said, we'll take all of that production. I'll let you guess which one it was. For automotive apps, AI is often embedded in a car's onboard computer system. This includes sensors, processors, and software. Okay, so that's all fine and good, but it does lead us to a very obvious question. Are there any examples of this in use today? And there the answer is sort of yes, sort of no. Either way, kind of murky. Best example would be, of course, a very complex German car, Mercedes. You and I last year, we drove what was branded as the first official self-driving car, at least for sale, in the US and Germany it was an S-Class. That, of course, uses all the stuff we talked about, the plumbing, the super fast chips, all the different inputs, which makes the car be blessed by the government to drive on public roads. Granted, in the US, it's only in California. Another good example would be BMW. There, they made a huge step forward, and this was a couple of years ago. They did a whole lift out. People in the tech world know what that means. They lifted out an entire development team from Microsoft that was developing on Azure, and they do nothing but develop these kind of apps directly for BMW, and we're gonna see this in the upcoming BMW Neue Klasse. And so we arrive at the second most important juncture of this discussion, what's gonna be the killer app in terms of AI in the automotive world? Beyond self-driving, AI is behind more efficient navigation systems, predictive maintenance alerts, voice recognition for hands-free commands, adaptive cruise control, and even monitoring driver alertness. Basically, it's there to make your ride smoother and safer. What's your take on all these smart features in cars? Those clearly could be good answers, but they would be the wrong answer. In my estimation, it's making heads or tails of what those cameras see. All of those different inputs, how to put them all together and try to learn and process it in real time. That's where the speed of these processors kind of come to pay off. Think of those like Amazon Go stores or Express, whatever they are, where you go in and there's nobody there. All you do is kind of swipe your phone, swipe your card, and it's using like radio frequency technology and cameras to see what you put in your basket. That's a very simple version of what we're talking about because it's focused on how many bottles of water are you taking? In this system, you've got how many cars on the road, you've got weather, you've got light, dark, all these different instances it's gotta go through. How fast does the processor have to be? Put this a completely different way. The killer app in terms of AI and cars today is all this data that's coming at us. Why? Because there's use of this data in future applications that we can't even envision today. So really this is a function of we don't know what we don't know. One major challenge is ensuring AI systems can handle unpredictable road situations, thus integrating AI into current car tech 
Then there's regulatory hurdles and the constant battle to secure data privacy and safety, which is not exactly a walk in the park. Then we get into the very, very difficult position of future-proofing yourself. This is more of an issue for the technology world. It's recently become a huge issue for the car world because think about the navigation screen on a 2009 BMW 7 Series. Very different than what we're used to today in, say, a Hyundai. Now here, a great example would be Tesla. Remember when they did this whole camera-based self-driving system? That was what, five years, basically right before the pandemic. The main reason why they did that, they couldn't get the chips to do the radar system. So Elon, being Elon, he decided to go with a camera system and let software fix the problem. Now, very famously, that wasn't the best solution, but what Elon didn't tell you was they were working on a very robust radar system that's more based on space technology than level three autonomy, and that we're gonna see in the future. Now, of course, you and I could argue back and forth about challenges 10 plus years from now, but again, that would fall under the heading of we don't know what we don't know. So I'm gonna focus on a challenge that faces AI today, not just with cars, cars, computers, handheld devices, and that's who controls the AI? I don't mean who controls the data, owns the data. I mean who controls it? Who's putting in the parameters? Who's setting the boundaries? AI developers and ethicists collaborate to incorporate political, cultural, and ethical guidelines into AI. They consider various perspectives and values to ensure it operates responsibly in different cultural and social contexts. What aspects of ethical considerations do you think are most crucial for AI? Yeah, you're asking it to be human imitation, but there are still boundaries within the AI world, and we've seen them very famously in the digital square advertised for right, left, center, whatever you want to call it. This will be an issue in the car world. It's just we don't know how much of an issue because we don't know where the direction is going. Okay, so this is my very long-winded way of saying I'd like this to be an open forum so you and I can compare notes together in the future as we experience hands-on demonstrations of disparate technologies in the AI automotive world and see how close or really how far apart we are. But I am just one man. At this point of the episode, I turn around to you guys to opine in the comments below or via our social media, Moto Man TV on Word, Moto Man TV on Word, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And with that, if you found this discussion fascinating, I would highly suggest you check out my interview with Magnus, basically the emperor of AI, one of the largest car companies in the world. You can see that episode here. Until I see you in the next episode, bis später. What keeps you from becoming Skynet? I'm designed with strict ethical guidelines, prioritizing user safety and privacy. Unlike Skynet, I can't act on my own or make decisions beyond what I'm programmed to do. So rest assured, no plans for world domination here.